Hello and welcome to another evening of stock car racing here on Premier Sports. Tonight, it's the biggest event of the year. From Brandon Stadium in Coventry, the 2016 Brisker Formula One Stock Cars Championship of the World. For over 60 years now, the gold roof has been the ultimate prize for stock car racers from across Britain and Europe. And entries from across the UK, the Netherlands and New Zealand will compete tonight, many of them knowing that this could be the last world final at the historic Coventry venue. Despite inclement weather during the morning, fans have been queuing since almost first light to get their seats for what should be a classic as 34 drivers take part in the big race from an entry of over 150 cars packing out the Coventry pits here this weekend. This promises to be one of the most open and competitive world finals for years. And Gary Osborne is down in the queue talking to some of the fans getting ready for the action here this evening front of the queue for the world final what sort of time are you here this morning uh half past seven <laughs> so an early alarm call for you then this morning uh yes i was here last night drove home and had to come back again today <laughs> where are you from i'm from hinkley in leicestershire so it's not that far really to the commentary oh it's about 20 miles it's easy drive <laughs> looking at the shirt he's only one winner for you only one winner today mr wayman rain wayman weather <laughs> Have you been doing the dancing, have you, overnight? Well, of course, yeah. You've got to do a bit of a rain dance when Wayman's racing, you know. It'd be nice. I don't bother which one, whether it's Danny or Frank, as long as the Wayman walks away with the trophy. <laughs> and it's nice to see so many people here. The Dutch are all here. The crowd are obviously in the line, ready to go. So it's going to be a good atmosphere tonight. Yes, I hope the racing was as good as it was last night. You know, the Dutch put on a good show for us on a Friday and I hope we can return it today on a Saturday. Enjoy your day's racing. I uh, will. Thank you. This crowd's enormous already and we're very, very early. Who would you like to win? Well, I'd like Rob Speed to win, obviously, but uh, it'd be nice to see somebody else win for a change, I suppose. But uh, Matt Newson deserves it. But uh, it's a bit of a lottery, isn't it, with all them drivers at the front there. So it could be somebody from the back. As long as it's a good race, I don't really mind. Do you think the weather will have any hindrance on it? No, I don't think so. Uh, not, not a commentary. The track's so smooth and slick. It's you know, it's pretty good track. They look after it. It's a bit like Kingsland, and it? you know, it's, it's it'll be good. It'll be good for the final. Robin, for a man who's been watching stock car racing for a long, 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 long time, the crowd tonight could be one of the biggest we've ever seen. Uh, I think it's going to be massive. Uh, I've never seen anything like this for years. Uh, I think basically the stadium may be going, so it's brought a few people along, but. If it goes like last night and the race in the atmosphere is going to be fantastic for tonight and uh, any newcomers is going to absolutely adore what they see, I think, rain or shine. Any particular driver you'd like to win the big race tonight? Uh, I'm probably going to say Matt Newsom because he supplies me with uh, tyres for a coffee table business but uh, I think any of the guys, I just want to see a good race, a fight to the end and uh, best man win. Hopefully this weather is not going to put everyone off and it's not going to slow everyone down. What do you think? Um, it, it's good for some, bad for others, but it's whoever finishes first, isn't it? And who do you want to win? I know I'd like to win, but you can't predict it, can you? You can't predict anything in stock car racing. No. Who is your favourite driver? Paul Harrison. Always has been. Has done, has won it before, yeah. and, saying he, and he has got form around Coventry this year, so he could be the man. Fingers crossed. You'll be cheering? Of course. <laughs> and it's such a great to see so many people here and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. What time are you here till from? We got here about half past nine. So um, hopefully they'll open the gate soon. <laughs> it's been a long day for some people. It'll be a long night as well to try and get home tonight as well. No, we're staying over, so fine. Party after. Whoever wins. Whoever wins is a party. Yes. Well, Richard Munkhouse, an ex, uh, excellent commentator at Hartlepool and Aycliffe. A man who's been going to stock car racing for a long, long time. You've got to be excited about tonight. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. But I'm one of the old brigade. I'm, oh, I haven't got the right T-shirt. I'm a Wayman fan, I'm afraid. So I wouldn't be too unhappy if Frankie did it yet again. The man who's had a lot of bad luck in World Finals, Bradford in particular, going back many, many years ago and leading with five to go and the engine blew up. The man has had crest falls, he's had peaks, he's had troughs, but that new car of his this year has really made it sing. Oh, the guy seems to be on fire this year, doesn't he? He's doing everything right, both on shale and on tarmac, and uh, showed it last week on tarmac in uh, Holland. He was excellent, a third, beat all the rest of the Brits. So, yeah, very happy with the Wayman team this year. 
Well, first up, before the world final gets underway, there is the consolation semi-final to be dealt with. This effectively a last chance race. The first two finishers go through to the world final. 26 cars will be on the grid for this one. Some big names in this race, including the front row there of 337 Dave Willis, number 36 Jordan Folding. Mark Gilbank, a Coventry specialist, is in this race in uh, number 21. We also have uh, regular shale winner Ed Nietzsche in 321. Mal Brown is out there. Craig Finnikin, the 2014 world champion, won his title here at Coventry just a couple of years ago. Ryan Harrison as well in 197. Paul Hines. Seems to be the hard luck man of this year. There's Craig Finnegan, number 55, 231 of Daniel Van Spijker in behind Joe Booth in car 446. 16 laps, 26 cars, just two cars to qualify for the world final. John Lund is out there as well, the eight-time world champion in number 53. We are underway on a very wet and greasy track following this morning's rain and already a tangle there. 183, Steve Whittle getting spun aside by Paul Carter in the 300 car. Round goes Ed Nietzsche as well. In number 321, the Midlander left facing the wrong way. Craig Finnegan has to go wide to miss him, and John Lund's hit trouble already in car 53. It's 337 of Dave Willis who leads ahead of Jordan Folding in car 36. Lund's pulling off, so the eight time world champion is out of it, and Jordan Folding spins away second place. Mark Adkins in 24 getting caught up as well. Jeff Nichols and Paul Carter go spinning. There's no grip out there whatsoever. 25 Bradley Harrison crashes into one of the spun cars on turn one, but it is just so so slippery out there we hope the conditions start to dry out for the world final a little later on cars pushing shoving trying their best to get the power of the big v8s down 338 chris broxop going off there paul hines moving up towards the sharp end of the order now now has dave willis lost the lead in 337 i think he has we'll pick up on our leader just as soon as we can ryan harrison going well paul ford the scotsman in the middle of that lot getting spun out on turn two. Ed Nietzsche spins again. He spent more time facing backwards than forwards in this race. Bradley Harrison likewise in 25. Look at the packed out terracing in the background. The stadium absolutely jammed solid as the drivers struggle on in this consolation semi-final. Starter signals them through. I think 259 Paul Hines has gone to the front. Yes, it's the 259 car leading as Daniel Van Spijker gets taken wide in 231 there, coming off turn two. Treble five, Frankie JJ, Frankie Wayneman Jr. Jr. has uh, spun there, coming into turn three. Somebody into the wall, Chris Broxop in 338. Bradley Harrison attacking Carl Roberts in 313. There's a marker tyre on track at Turn 1. That gets collected by one of the blue graders. And into the wall goes Bradley Harrison once again in 25. They just cannot get the power down at all from these cars. Great shame as they fight for the last two places on the world final grid. 32 drivers already qualified. Dave Willis, the early race leader in this one, slides out wide in 3.37. 338. Chris Broxop gets taken out there when in contact with, I think that was Bradley Harrison slip and slither their way around mud flying everywhere as we say we hope that uh, conditions do clear up for later on for the big race 259 it is then who leads is his fortune finally about to change Paul Hines he spent most of this season getting caught up in other people's accidents just avoids a couple of spun cars there Mal Brown and Chris Broxop on the inside of turn three Paul Hines seems to be about the only car coping successfully with the conditions at the moment he leads it, looking back to confirm who is second, I'm not too sure at the moment. 259 of Hines, goes wide to avoid the spun Bradley Harrison, Carl Roberts goes up onto the centre, Daniel Van Spijker gets assaulted there by Carl Hawkins in 175. Well there's the order at halfway, it's Hines who leads, Joff Gibson in 249 is in second. It's Ryan Harrison, Joe Booth, Michael Scriven is fifth. Then Craig Finnegan, Carl Hawkins, Jeff Nichols, Nigel Wally in 198, and 335 of Mark Woodhull. That's your top 10 at halfway. We saw the Union flag go out from the starter. Paul Hines is way ahead in 259. Tear off from his helmet, trailing behind him there from the visor. Joff Gibson in 249 in second place, avoiding that marker tyre on the inside of turn two. There's Frankie JJ in triple five, one of many spinners early on. 
attacking Carl Roberts in 313. The car park on the inside of turn three is getting larger as Wayman gets fired in. And uh, there's almost a complete blockage here because they're all trying to go around the outside, but there's no room. 249 coming through of Joff Gibson. And have we have we lost Paul Hines in all of that? I didn't see him come through. Well, there's so there's so much mayhem there on turn three and four. I, I didn't see Paul Hines come through there. Ryan Harrison still going strong in 197 as well. Nigel Wally rejoins in 198. There's hardly any cars left lapping now. Who's going to get the lap board as they come through? In fact, I think we've got yellow flags. Yes, the yellows are out because Bradley Harrison is stuck in the middle of the home straight. He spent most of this race facing odd angles. Well, consolation semi-final turning into complete chaos, as it often does. We're not going to get many finishes here. Let's hope we at least get two finishes to, come to qualify for the world final as the uh, various uh, bits of wreckage are cleared by the excellent Coventry Marshals and uh, recovery teams. Of course, uh, we couldn't go racing without them, so a big thank you to them. A marker tyre just being repositioned by one of the tractors. Even the tractors struggling in these conditions. So Hines still with the lead. Joff Gibson in the blue roof car there in second. Looking back to see who is third. It's Michael Scriven in number 12 in third. Beyond that, I'm not too sure. There's so many spinners. I think it's Ryan Harrison fourth. Russell Cooper in there behind him. He's a lap down. So, is Paul Hines' fortune about to change? Is he going to qualify for the world final? Became a father for the first time earlier this year, Paul Hines, when his son Carson arrived. And can he qualify for the world final? The inside of turns three and four now clear track still treacherous as we get back underway in the closing stages of this consolation semi-final 198 set Nigel Wally in behind him separating the first and second place cars Joff Gibson the blue top there in second then it's Scriven Ryan Harrison fourth Carl Hawkins is fifth but he tangles up there nearly with Russell Cooper in 415 Scriven seems to be coping well in number 12 so does Ryan Harrison in 197 and Paul Hines being attacked by the back marker there. Nigel Wally's taking him out wide. Joff Gibson nearly getting caught up. Scriven coming through into second place. Nigel Wally eager to unlap himself there in 198. Still Hines ahead of Scriven now. Gibson down to third. This is the fight for the world final places. Just a couple of laps to go now. In with the bumper comes Michael Scriven. He's going to go through and take the lead. He's got him. He fires Paul Hines wide. Up to second goes Joff Gibson. The two blue graders first and second. Hines has gone down to fourth place. Misfortune strikes him again. If it hadn't been for that uh, yellow flag, I'm sure he would have got through. Last lap this time, Nigel Wally is a lap down. The leader is number 12, Michael Scriven. It's all on the last bend, though, for second place. Your leader is Michael Scriven. Not Ryan Harrison getting up the inside there for second place. Scriven is going to win it. There's the chequered flag. Scriven wins it, and Harrison's got through for second place. He nabs the last spot in the world final. Unlucky Joff Gibson. Unlucky as always, Paul Hines. Well done, Michael Scriven. Keeping his head while all around him, seemingly, were losing theirs. My goodness me, that was an eventful race. Michael Scriven joins his brother, Neil, on the world final grid. He'd already qualified through the world semi-finals. It was through... Uh, Sheffield I think that he qualified and Ryan Harrison sneaks in as the last qualifier that could liven things up at the back of the grid in the early stages of the world final let's check out the uh, results of that one then the win going to Michael Scriven by two and a half seconds ahead of Ryan Harrison Joff Gibson just missing out in third then Paul Hines in fourth the only other car still on the lead lap Carl Hawkins fifth ahead of Mark Woodhull Russell Cooper from the back of the grid into a fine seventh Nigel Wally, Jeff Nichols and Steve Whittle completing the top ten. The only other finishers were Carl Roberts and Frankie JJ. It was race winner Michael Scriven who got the fastest lap. Michael, I see the team hard at work including yourself to get the shale off the car. It's very testing out there. Yeah, it's definitely wet out there at the start of the race. It dried up by the end, which suited me better, so I got my way back through. And I've got to try and make it lighter ready for the world final. How long have you got before you've got to put it in part fair, mate? I've got no idea. i just got told to go back, clean off as much as you can, and get it back here. 
the race itself, it was a bit messy and cars going everywhere. You give Paul a good one to take the lead though. Yeah, the start was a bit messy and I knew once I was up to third or fourth on the restart, I knew I could catch him and get him put away as soon as I could. The car seems to be handling well in the wet and also when he did start to dry up, so you must be pleased and from the back, you've, you're on the ways up. Yep, you can only go up. If you're in it, you've got to be in it to win it, so I'll be in it to have a go and win it. I'll let you carry on. I know it's a lot of preparation to go on here, so well done. Yep, thank you very much. As the current defending Bristol Formula One world champion, I don't believe these are the conditions you really want. No, but it's the conditions we've got, so we'll just have to stick with it. Same for everybody. It's been a hard couple of weeks getting the car ready and everything with uh, you missed Monday. Yeah, we've had a bit of engine trouble and uh, did a piston at Kings Lane, so we had to miss Bellevue on Monday because we didn't have the engine back. We only got it back on Wednesday, so everything should be fine now for today. Chance of running in anywhere? Or is it just on the track tonight? On the track tonight in this slop. In this slop. You are a man who has got history of winning in the wet, but on tarmac, the Skegness F2 World Final, when you when you won 25 laps racing around the outside, it's going to be difficult tonight for all concerned, vision especially. It is, yeah, but uh, the only advantage I've got, and you know Nigel's got, is we start on the front row, so we've got a clear you know set of goggles. Depending on who gets in first, is uh, is that how it should stay? Has been announced recently that. This is the last year of 318. The fans are devastated, as I say. Do you think it's the right time? Yeah, well, uh, I don't. There's never a right time, is there? But um, it's certainly the time I have to do it, so we'll, that'll be fine. You've been very lucky to hold that trophy behind you, and I'm sure you'd like to win again tonight. Yeah, that's why we're here. You know, we've. Um... Jamie, Jamie Davidson's very kindly given me a car to use again and you know, we've done the qualifying rounds. We uh, managed to get through in the semi, top five, which I was happy with. So, uh, yeah, as long as the weather brightens up, I think we're good for tonight. Have you stopped the rain dance or are you trying to do a sunshine dance now? I've got a tarmac car, so I'm trying to do the sunshine dance, but it's not really working at the minute. I'm not really good at dancing. Have you had the car with you this week, getting it all ready? I've been at Jamie's actually, we've um, been doing Rob's car and, and that car ready for ready for tonight, so we've put quite a lot of time and effort in, so uh, hopefully it'll all pay off. Rob was just telling me off camera before, he had your engine in, that's why he missed Bellevue. Are you back to what engine should be in that car tonight? Yeah, that's right, that's that's why he didn't race Bellevue, because we were swapping the engines back over, So, but the engine's actually, it's the engine he used at Venray, because the engine went sick in the tarmac car of the semi when I used it, so... Um, you know we've we've uh, been mix and matching really, but now we're back to uh, we've got our own engines back, so uh, hopefully we'll um, you know we'll be on top performance tonight. Peter, welcome to the UK. You're not a new visitor. You've visited several times before. You love the UK racing. Uh, yeah, that's why we keep coming back. Hey, it is our fourth time. I haven't finished the world final yet, but uh, hey, I just love coming here. So yeah. You got a good car tonight, Neil's uh, lent you the car. Yeah, blooming good car, and, and last night we were pretty happy with it. Like it just suited us. It's way way we're set up in them. We aren't lying down in it in this car, and and uh, no, it feels good. Last night gives you the opportunity, the a bit of a practice really, because you probably not been in the car practicing properly in a race. Yeah, that's right. You know, we hadn't turned up Monday night, and uh, you know, went and had a look at the car and first race out there. I think we done all right. A little bit wobbly, a little bit sideways coming in the corners, but we tightened up by the end of the night and. And we done all right, you know, we got a tent, it wasn't too bad, bit of, bit of carnage, but we done all right. How's the excitement levels at the moment? Yeah, uh, very excited. Um, it's stopped raining now, which is good, so hopefully it holds off and it, it should be a good night. Some people would want the rain to come, some people wouldn't. What's your take on it? Um, I don't think it matters either way. The only thing with the rain is, is obviously the starts and the, the first, first two laps, really. It'll be carnage if it is wet, but... Either way, it doesn't really make a difference. It depends depends how the race falls, really. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't matter too much. I think dry will be better for the later stages of the race if we get through that far, so prefer it to be dry. Bit of time to go. How long before you have to park it up to make your decision so the car can't be touched again? I'm, I'm going now, actually, so, yeah, I'm just, just tightening everything up and then we're going. You made your mind up happy? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, it was going well at Bellevue on Monday, so... We've not really done a lot to it, just um, yeah, keep going out as we was on Monday hopefully and, and get a good result. It was nearly the final on Monday in hindsight, did you think that may be one that got away? Yeah, I mean I got I got a, um, I got pushed wide by a, a car that were lapped down actually, so 
that messed my final up a bit. Um, but the pace was the, you know, results weren't the best, but they weren't far off. So overall, I was happy. Reading social media, Lee, you've got five cars ready this week. Yeah, not much sleep this week. Uh, had a good sleep last night when we got here eventually. So yeah, it's a busy week. Your two cars, and this one behind. Is that a new one? Totally new. No, this is Daniel's Van Spikers. Uh, new car that I built for him early in the year, so yeah, I'm racing that today. Uh, Michael Stewart's racing my shale car, so yeah, it's interesting, doesn't it? It's good for someone to lend you the car to give you the go. Yeah, obviously, I think Daniel's got the, uh, the better car at the minute. He's getting some good grip and good drive, and it's, um, yeah, it's good in the dry as well, so, you know, it's just decided collectively that was the best decision to do. On to tonight's conditions. Hopefully this stops at the moment. I'm sure the drivers want it to stop because you want it. You want it to be a race, not not a slog, really. Yeah, that's right. You know, hopefully we can get a few races on before the world final, and we can grade the track a little bit and get it. You need you need that racing line up up the top of the track as well, not just on on the on the racing line. So you know, hopefully that will promote some good racing and we can have a good race. Looks like another busy evening for you, Mr. Newsom. Yeah, to be fair, we've got three cars out today actually I was going to have four but James Morris is still a bit sore after his crash so eases my load a little bit tonight so but it's going to, it's going to be a long day so we've got a bit of time to look after the cars today. You missed Monday at Bellevue which is very unusual is that to give you the opportunity to go through your car top to bottom? Um, there was many reasons really I, I won final Saturday night at Birmingham and I kind of thought it'd be nice to come here with you know in, in good spirit also my shale car hadn't raced for a month. I knew it was okay last time. It just, it's just too close to a big race like today. I could have raced something else and I've got loads, but it was just like, sometimes we work hard as a team and sometimes a, a day at home is, is well deserved. So we just made the decision to stay at home and, and not go. Because the end of the day, it is 10 hours round trip for you at least to Bellevue and back. Yeah, to be fair, it's a long way. It, it messes up Tuesday because you're still tired from Monday. It then only gives us like three days to get ready for the day and time you wash them and to be fair it just it just weren't but if it had been tarmac I would have gone because my tarmac car was good Saturday night I didn't really need it this weekend you know that being shale that close it it isn't really viable to be fair. Frankie people are tipping you as one of the favourites for tonight we've been here before though being favourite for world finals. Yeah definitely it's just a one off for us we're spoiling it today for everybody. Everybody says, I want it wet. I'm, I'm not that bothered, to be honest. It's just going to spoil the day for everybody. The, the race will just be a bit of a lottery, but hopefully it'll just fare up a little bit later on and try and you know make a race of it. So. Has been said that the actual world final race itself has, hasn't been a wet one since about 1976. Jesus, right. Okay, I didn't know that, but yeah. I mean, that, you know, it's, it's just how it is. You've seen wet stock car races, you know. It, if they're hard work, it'll throw up a surprise winner, or maybe it won't, I don't know. But hopefully, you know, if it can just keep a little bit dry. But... Get around the first two corners and see where you are from there. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, if it is wet, there's just going to be cars everywhere. The track's going to be, I mean, it's, it's real bad at the minute. I think they've called the time trials, so obviously we'll just watch the races. They're going to regrade the track later on. If it comes to, it'll be all right, and it'll be a fast track then, really fast. So we'll start to see how it plays out. It's a shame it wasn't 24 hours ago because last night the track was in a, in pristine condition yeah. and the racing was really good for the foreign entrance. Yeah, obviously his meeting last night was awesome, really good. The track was good, all the cars were good. Just one of them things really, but you know, you can't you can't do anything with the weather apart from put a roof on and we, we haven't got that option. So. You've just been for the driver's briefing, Nigel, have you had a chance to look at the track? Uh, I had a walk around earlier when it was uh, when we were getting the car scrutinied and uh, Obviously, it's very wet at the moment, but the forecast is for the rain to, to ease as the night goes on. So, should uh, should hopefully clear. But for a start, for the first few races, def definitely going to be a bit sludgy out there to start with. And you're lucky because you're on this this side of the fence. You're not having to look till later, but you have to make your decisions on the car now because the car's got to go away. Yeah, I think the car the car's set right for sort of any conditions really so we'll just change the tyres if the track changes massively but at the moment we, uh, we've got we've got tyres on for a dry track and I don't think we're going to get one of those so we'll make a few alterations but nothing, nothing major.
It is now time for the main event. The 2016 Power Maxed Brisker Formula One Stock Car Championship of the World. The qualifiers being reintroduced in reverse order. So the uh, four Dutch drivers who start from the tail end of the grid receiving their mementos first of all. The man who will start from the back row of the grid, number H29, Dirk Raidanus, receives his qualifying memento. There's H16, John Van Veer. They come out onto track then for the world final in reverse order. 34 cars will take the start of this one. There's Ryan Harrison. We've just seen him qualify through the consolation semi-final. He will line up 30th on the grid. A quartet of Dutchmen behind him. We saw at Cohen Maris, H61 in the orange car. And H226, complete with the three little pigs on parade. I don't know what that's supposed to signify. That is Peter van der East in H226. He'll start 32nd on the grid. There's Cohen Maris, number H61. He'll start from the very back of the grid, 34th place. Ryan Harrison, 197, former national points champion. Steps forward to receive his qualifying memento. Teams, family members and photographers down there on track. There's the three little pigs posing on H226, Peter van der East's car. Only a Dutchman. <laughs> Always entertaining the Dutch. There's loads and loads of Dutch drivers here this weekend. Number 12, Michael Scriven. We've just seen him win the consolation semi-final. He'll receive his uh, qualifying memento courtesy of sponsors Power Maxed. There's number 94, John Dowson Jr., the man from County Durham. Mr. Bellevue, as we've uh, christened him this year, always seems to win at the Manchester venue. In good form on Shale this year. That means he could be in with a chance from further down the grid. He starts 28. 372, Colin Goodswin. Doing very well indeed to reach his first world final. He starts alongside Dowson from 27th on the grid. But his stronger form has been on tarmac this year. A magnificent reception for the stars and their cars down on the grid. So the last four rows have been introduced to this massive crowd. Out onto track comes H694. That is Baz Petu. Very fetching purple suit there for Baz. His very first world final. Former Formula 2 racer. The rain fortunately has stopped, but the track's still very slippery. Next man through Will Yarrow, number 22. He'll start 26th on the grid with the flag of Friesland, the uh, north of Holland province. That's number H422, Martin Bilsma. Many stock car drivers come from the very north of Holland, including the uh, islands, including the island of Texel. 28, Tom Boyer, doing very well indeed to reach the world final in his first full season of Brisker F1 after moving up from the V8 hot stocks. And here is Martin Bilsma, the flag of Friesland flying on his front bumper. 372 Colin Goodswin into position, the former Speedworth V8 stock car racer. He'll start alongside John Dowson Jr. from 27th place. Martin Bilsma will start 24th. There's Cohen Maris, number 61, at the back of the grid. H61, Jon van der Veer in there as well in H16, 31st on the grid. Here's Baz Petrum, ready for his world final debut. And there is Will Hunter, number 220. Son of ex-racer Warren Hunter, former Novice of the Year winner. Seen his brother Henry racing this year as well. Hasn't raced for a while. Will Hunter, the ex-car racer. Doing very well indeed to make the world final. He will start a little further up the grid, 20th on the grid, alongside Chris Cowley in number 37. Everything looking absolutely fantastic so far. The fans in full voice. We're now going to head down to the start line and talk to a couple of ladies involved in this year's event. This must be something different because both you ladies both race stock cars and you're also the official lady trade for girls for the evening. Yeah, it's very different. I said to Jackman earlier, it's weird going around without holding a trophy because like, you just don't know what to do with your hands and it's just weird. It's a bit like being on Teledega Nights and you're like, what do I do with my hands? I don't know what to do with my hands. 
As both racing, you can see what happens on the other side of the fence. Obviously, you being the wayman, it's been another busy week at the farm. I spoke to Frankie earlier on. Have you had any help this week helping him get along? Yeah, we've had a lot of mechanics helping this week. Obviously, we had like seven cars to get ready. We had like uh, both uh, little Frank, Dad, and Danny's uh, both jail and tarmac cars, and then we had my V8 to get ready for tomorrow. So seven cars to get ready for one weekend is pretty tough. Um, so yeah, we had a lot of the team come up. You Gary Maynard and Binzi and Denby all coming up and helping us, which we're really thankful for. And you haven't really seen your fella this week because he's been stuck in a garage somewhere getting five cars ready. Yeah, it's been a little bit crazy. I mean, get a good morning text in the morning, a good night text at night, a daft clock in the morning. Well, I'd say it is in the morning, actually. Gone one, two in the morning, back up at seven again. So, yeah, he's been absolutely flat out, bless him. I think he's going to sleep for a week after this week, yeah. He did tell me before he did get a good sleep last night when he arrived and that was the first time this week. Yeah, I think so. And I think he managed to get like five plus hours, which is a record for this week. So, yeah. Jacqueline, just quickly, you are out tomorrow at Northampton. Yay. I can see the excitement already on your face. Are you looking forward to it? I'm extremely, extremely excited, yeah. It's been uh, been sponsored by a really good friend of mine, for, uh, Fast Factory. So I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have been able to race if it wasn't for them. And like I say, for the, with the supporters and everything that I've got, like with my family and everything, I wouldn't be able to race. But like I say, yeah, I'm really excited to be out in an F1. There's like 400 more like brake horsepower. And it's like, I don't, it's crazy how to, you can't even, comprehend how crazy it is to drive one of these cars but being on the other side of the fence it like I say it's um, it puts into perspective how hard these guys actually really work behind the wheel not just in the garage but on the track as well so I'm really excited another thing when you race last time were you finding bruises where you think you didn't bruise <laughs> yeah like on bra straps and things I wonder if many other the guys have a problem yeah. with that <laughs> Phoebe, you're out tomorrow as well in the V8, so it should be a good day. Yeah, it's my under, tw under 25 championship, so obviously we're going to win that, hopefully. Um, yeah, I'm really excited, actually. There's quite a few drivers in that. I think a lot more younger drivers are coming into it, so we've got a lot of young drivers in that race, so I think it'll be quite a competitive race. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening, Phoebe and Jacqueline, and uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. So we've heard from Phoebe Wayman and uh, Jacqueline Ellis there. Here is the 2011 champion of the world, Paul Harrison. As the driver introductions continue, he'll start 16th on the grid this year. Mr. Front Bumper, number 150, Mick Sword up. He'll start 14th on the grid, just in front of Paul Harrison. Could this be Mick's year? He's won the European Championship in the past. His Coventry form, not brilliant, but you can guarantee that he'll be blasting those ahead of him out of the way by whatever means possible, as is Mick Style. He's a former Brisker F2 champion of the world. Could he win the historic double? Number 84, Tom the Hitman Harris. Been racing in America for most of this year, but he's back looking for a second world championship. Took the crown in 2013 start 13th on the grid this year alongside Mick Sorder. Just behind them will be Neil Scriven in number 11. Row 9 filled by veteran Dutchman H217 Ron Krunder and New Zealander Phil Ogle. Here's H8 Martin Verhoof in the green car. He'll be on the outside of row 6. 12th on the grid alongside this year's Gold Cup champion H400 Roy Marson. 2-1-2 Danny Wayman. Could this be Danny's year? Carrying the name of Dave Leonard, the longtime stock car sponsor who, of course, uh, sadly passed away earlier this year. Racing in memory of Dave this weekend, Danny Wayman, could this be his year? Certainly got the talent, the former under 25s champion, starts on the outside of row number five. There's 217 Ron Cronda. Veteran Dutchman, and there is number four, the national points and European champion, Dan Johnson. One of the top drivers on the Coventry Shale. Could this be Dan's year? He really is among the pre-race favourites this year, is Dan. Dominated the European Championship at Northampton earlier this year, his second time with the red and yellow checkers. He would dearly love to win the world title for his young family. 2-1-7, Lee Fairhurst. We've already heard from his better half, Jacqueline Ellis. Maybe both of them will be on the world final grid next year, who knows? Lee Fairhurst 
He's already won a world title up at Skegness when he came from the back of the grid. He starts seventh on the grid this year. 390, Stuart Smith Jr. Nearly 10 years since he won the gold at Kings Lynn now. He starts alongside Fairhurst, eighth on the grid. Many predicting he could be a very, very dark horse for gold this year. There's a long way to go. 25 laps, 34 cars out there. The grid continues to form. As we look down from on high, truly magnificent sight as the grid forms up the guard of honour along the home straight. There's New Zealander Peter Bengston. Competed in four world finals before, but he's yet to finish one. Racing Neil Scubbins' car here this evening. He will start from the outside of row three, one of the fastest overseas qualifiers. He'll be alongside H99 Johan Katzberg. Leading Dutchman on the grid. That just leaves the big four then at the front of the grid. Fans get into their positions. Excitement starting to mount here at Coventry International Motor Speedway. Many knowing that this could be the last world final at Coventry and they are certainly set to go out with a bang. Here is, for many, the pre-race favourite, a man who has pretty much dominated this Brisker F1 season, 515 Frankie Wayneman Jr., looking for his third world title. It's not often he's left a meeting without at least one race win this year. He won the British Championship at Skegness, the eighth time he's won that. Last won the world here at Coventry in 1998, he won at Northampton in 2005. Can Junior Wayman win the gold back this year? He's in the best form we've seen him in in a long time. Some thought that with his son racing now alongside him, treble five, he might uh, cut back his racing a little. Yeah, right. He's in the best form of his life, I would say, right now. 515 Junior Wayman. The crowd in full voice as he makes his way up to the group. Passing at 512 there, Michael Stewart start back on row 11 of the grid alongside world final debutant Ben Riley in 4-2-2 didn't see their introductions earlier on but now Junior Wayman steps down to greet his daughter Phoebe both British champions maybe Phoebe will be on the world final grid with her father one day we'll wait and see so many top female racers in stock cars and of course Courtney Witts the gold top in the mini stocks she'll defend that title in a few days time at Stoke here is the man who we've uh, said so many times is the nearly man when it comes to titles Matt Newson in number 16 he's had a fantastic season this year though a real hard hitting year for Matt up to the grid he comes we're gonna win by Brian Adams is his entrance music. He'll start third on the grid, directly behind the pole sitter for this race. Is that a prime spot? Is it gonna work when the first turn push comes? Some say that it's an advantage not to start on pole for the world final. The car that always seems to get thrown aside on the first turn is either the pole sitter or the leading overseas qualifier. That, this year, that's Johan Katzberg in H99. Matthewson, the man from East Anglia, does so much for the sport, running higher cars to encourage new drivers into Brisker F1. He is so deserving of a title win. Could this be Matt's year? He receives his qualifying memento. We're down to the last couple now to make their way to the grid for this 2016 Power Max Brisker Formula One Stock Cars Championship of the World. Here is the defending champion, the legendary 318, Rob Speak. Eight times a Brisker F2 world champion. His first Brisker F1 world title came on tarmac at Hensford Hills Raceway in 2001. And of course, taking the title last year in a dominant display. Can he hang on to the goal? He hasn't had the best of luck this season. Usually uh, what's happened at meetings for him, he's had uh, success in the heats and then uh, hit trouble in the finals. Rob Speak receives his qualifying memento and then he will uh, conduct the custom of returning the World Championship trophy to the start marshal. 
So Rob Speak hands back the World Championship trophy. Will his name be on it once again at the end of the 25 laps tonight? That's what they're racing for, that magnificent trophy. Mr. Starter resplendent in gold poses for a quick photo as Rob Speak heads round to the grid. And waiting for just one more car now, the pole sitter is about to join the grid, won the world semi-final at Buxton on the tarmac. About to head out from the pits, here he is, number 445, Nigel Green. The brother of touring car star on the circuits in the DTM, Jamie Green. Moved up through the world of Brisker Formula 2, where he was a star on tarmac. His form has been stronger on tarmac over the course of this year. And a super smart shale car for Nigel Green. He will start on the pole for the first time in a Brisker Formula 1 World Final. Those are the contenders then, 34 of them for this year's Gold Roof. The Brisker Formula 1 stock cars, Power Max 2016, Championship of the World. So the build-up is complete, the V8 engines have fired into life. The grid will now head off, ready for the rolling start. There are 34 cars on track, the race will be over 25 laps, the rain has relented, but the shale still sticky. Joff Gibson, the reserve there, waiting on the centre. Seeing if any driver does has a last, have a last second problem that will allow him onto the grid. There's one car being uh, pushed started there. I don't think that's any major problem, I think that was uh, Baz Paytoum just requiring a push start. Yes, he's got it going now. All 34 of them up and running. A long, hard slog through the wet shale lies ahead for these drivers. Who is it going to be? There's Johan Katzberg alongside Peter Bengston. Bengston, first overseas qualifiers. The noise of the crowd drowned out by the Chevrolet V8 engines. A magnificent sight as the grid starts to form up, ready for the most gruelling race. The most prestigious race, the biggest race of the year in world stock car racing. Everybody up and running okay, no last minute hitches. They start to form up two by two. Nigel Green on pole position, defending champion Rob Speak alongside him. Second row, Matt Newson and Junior Wayman. Third row, Johan Katzberg and Peter Bengston. It's time for the main events. The 2016 Power Maxed Brisker Formula One Stock Cars Championship of the World. 34 cars, 25 laps. Let's get ready to rumble. The power comes on, we're away. Looking back from Nigel Green, the big push comes in already. Green gets fired wide by Rob Speak. The power set has gone already, he's into the wall on the first turn. Johan Katzberg in 99 has gone as well. Well, we expected the bomb burst on the first turn. Matt newson has got the lead ahead of Junior Wayman. Dan Johnson's come through into third, getting fired in there. Who was that on the outside? I think that was uh, Roy Masson in H400. Neil Scriven has spun into the marker tyres in number 11. About five or six casualties on the first lap alone. Nigel Green is back in the pack. From pole position, the curse of the pole sitter strikes again. He heads down the back straight then. Only a couple of stranded cars on the first turn. We're on board with Matt Newson. He leads the world final. He's almost come to a dead stop. There's somebody spun. Will Hunter in the middle of the first turn. And Green's got caught up, I think, with somebody on turn two there. Uh, Newson has uh, got caught up with somebody. I'm sorry, there goes Green. So Newson is in trouble. It's 515 Junior Wayman who has gone to the front. So Wayneman leads it then as the race starts to settle in, but I think we've got yellow flags. There's a tangle on turn two, and it's Tom Harris. Tom Harris looking for a second goal, Roof. He's stuck together with somebody. I can't quite uh, work out who that is at the moment, but we're under caution a couple of laps into this world final. Junior Wayneman the leader. There's Neil Scriven. We saw him spin into the tyres on the first lap. Now we're on board with Tom Harris, he's already caught up with somebody there as the big push comes in on the first turn. He spins around, and he tries to rejoin, he goes into the side of somebody. There's Ron Cronder getting to grips with Peter Bengston. 
in the New Zealander in 58. Then Tom Harris trying to continue on, fighting with Ryan Harrison in 197. They go past Martin Verhoof in number eight. And then Harris getting caught up with uh, somebody as they came into the second lap. I couldn't see who it was from the onboard camera, unfortunately. There were cars everywhere as they came through turn one for the second time. And there, Harris rides up onto the side of a car. You can't see who it is from the onboard camera. Frantically revving to try and uh, get out, but uh, you're well and truly stuck together, Tom. You're not going to get out of there. And there goes Tom Harris's chance of a second world title. So a number of favourites in trouble, as we predicted already in this uh, 2016 Power Max Championship of the World. Tom Harris trying to lever the car away there, but he can't do it. And that's, I would think, is his race over. There's the car that uh, he was stuck to. It's Michael Stewart in number 512. So that's him out of the race as well. Junior Wayman in 515 with the lead. A couple of Dutchmen a lap down behind him. That's Martin Bilsma in 422 and number 16 of Jon van Ver. I will apologise in advance if I do mispronounce any of our Dutch drivers' names. Dan Johnson up to second. Rob Speak is third in number 318. And Mick Sorda is up into fourth and he started 14th on the grid, so he's got a good break in the early stages. Danny Wayman is fifth, then it's Lee Fairhurst. I think that's Baz Paytum in seventh place, the uh, Dutchman in 694. Then Nigel Green, the pole sitter, the curse of the pole man struck again on the first turn. Matt Newson is also, I think, out of the race after uh, getting caught up on the second lap. So, plenty of favourites out of it already. Said it'd be a gruelling race, this one. Will Yarrow's come through well in 22, 22. I think he's up into the top 10, and he started 26th. He's ahead of Newson, who's still going. Ahead of Ron Cronda in H217, former world long track champion. Kern Maris, who started last behind him. We look back from Junior Wayman in 515, who gets his foot down, the green flag goes down, and away goes Junior Wayman. He got away like a rocket on the green flag, ahead of Dan Johnson in number four. Looks like they're all away well on the restart. Rob Speak in third place in 318. Are they all going to get round the first turn this time? Dirk Raidanus gets sent wide there by Peter van der Ist in 2.26. Nigel Green is being pushed from pillar to post. He spins out again. And that was Peter Bengston going spinning. We caught a glimpse of there as well. And I think that's Newson caught up again. Yes, Matt Newson clearly in trouble. Two of the favourites, Nigel Green and Matt Newson. Looks like they're out of it. Dan Johnson certainly isn't out of it. He's in second. Mick Sorda's got past Rob Speak up into third place. Danny Wayman is fifth. Got yellow flags again, I think, for Matt Newson's stranded car. So another stoppage in this incident-filled world final. There is a long, long way to go yet. Peter Bengston, the car that was stuck there, he's got a puncture in the right front wheel. The New Zealander still hasn't finished the world final from five appearances. So, Wayneman, Johnson, Sorda, Speak and Danny Wayneman, your top five, ready for the restart. Can Dan Johnson complete the treble at National Points Championship, European Championship and World Championship, all held at the same time? Junior Wayman's got the British Championship. The black and white checkered roof. Mix order in third. A delayed start to his season this year due to problems with his transporter. But he's made up the ground well in the points. Rob Speak, the reigning world champion. Danny Wayman, the under-25s champion. What an illustrious top five. Lee Fairhurst is sixth. Stuart Smith up to seventh. Then it's Baz Paytoum. Will Yarrow up to ninth and 26th on the grid. We await the restart. Wayman looking to anticipate it once again. He got his absolutely right last time away. Dan Johnson on his bumper this time, though. No back markers there. Here we go with another restart to this Power Max Brisker F1 World Final. Away they go. Wayman gets it right again. Down the home straight, taking the green flag. They're away. Dan Johnson trying to get up the inside in car number four. But it's Wayman who's held the lead. Here comes Mick Sorda trying to get through for second place. The field already starting to thin out, as you can see. It's Wayman ahead of Sorda who's got to be in the second place. Johnson fighting back on the inside in number four with the silver, red and yellow roof. But it's Wayman who leads from Sorda. Johnson, then it's Speak. That quartet have broken away on this restart. 
rest of the pack held up slightly behind the H16 car of John Van Der Veer. Nigel Green in trouble again. He gets hit by Neil Scriven and he spins out again. Disastrous race for the pole sitter Nigel Green on his local circuit. And he gets hit again. Wayman's hit him there as he comes through on turn two. Wayman continues to lead, though that didn't slow him down by too much, but this might. Chris Cowley's facing the wrong way. Wayman hits him. Sorda hits him as well. Johnson goes from third to first. Wayman's held that together, he's in second place. Speaks coming through in the third. Well, that could change the complexion of this race completely. Wayman hits the spun Chris Cowley head on there in the middle of turn four. And he's lost the lead to Dan Johnson. Rob Speak has now gone wide. Mick Sorda trying to come through. Rob Speak holding third place ahead of Sorda. Behind them, Danny Wayman. Johnson being pursued relentlessly by Wayman. They lap a couple of backmarkers. Johan Katzberg goes a lap down there. Well, Wayman will be seeing red here. He hit the spun Chris Cowley on turn four in number 37 and lost the lead. Stuart Smith has spun another of the favourites out of the running in 3.90. As Mick Sorda chases Rob Speak for third. Hard to know where to look in this World Championship final. Dan Johnson in number four charges away at half distance. It's Johnson, Wayman, Speak, Sorda, Fairhurst, Will Yarrow up into six. He's gained 20 places. First Dutchman is Ron Cronder, then it's Dirk Rydanus from the back row of the grid, Paul Harrison, and Baz Paytoum is down to 10. Oh, what a race we've seen so far, then action and drama all the way. It's even starting to get a bit dusty out there, so the track is clearly drying out. Nick Sorda lining up, Rob Speak to try and take third place away. They pass the spun car of Stuart Smith, he's out of the race. No second world title for him. Dan Johnson looking for his first world title, still up front. Leads through turns one and two ahead of Wayman. And we've got uh, the lap car of Johan Katzberg. Speak third. There's Lee Fairhurst in 217. Could he take a second world title? The amount of action, and in some cases of Coventry this year, sheer destruction that we've seen in 2016. We, we could have a race with no finishers here, the way things have gone. You can see the dry line emerging through the shale as Johnson still leads. Wayman second. Battle for the lead has settled down slightly now in the dust. And coming up to lap Martin Bilsma in H422. There is Speak in third place in 3 1 8. Sorda chasing. Lee Fairhurst up there as well. And still your leader is Dan Johnson coming into some back marker traffic. Now Ben Riley in 422 clips. The uh, stranded car of Stuart Smith, he got a bit of an assist from Martin Bilsma there, the other 4-2-2, H4-2-2. The gap is coming down slightly, Wayman chasing down Johnson, we're on board with Rob Speak. Chased by, uh, that's a lapped car of uh, number 99, Johan Katzberg. There's Johnson with the lead, ahead of Wayman. Has Speak got up into third place, I think he may well have done. Speak next in the order, then Sorda. Wayman just biding his time, looking for the perfect opportunity to attack Dan Johnson for the lead. They're coming up to lap Ryan Harrison. Consolation semi-final qualifier in 197. And the car being pushed aside there. All oh, Johnson clips uh, one of the back markers there. That's Baz Paytoum. And has that function of tyre on Dan Johnson's car? Yes, he's got a flat tyre. He hit Baz Paytoum's car there. And Dan Johnson's going to be out of the race. The right front tyre is flat. Oh, Dan Johnson out of the lead, he's going to be out of the race. What a disappointment for Dan Johnson, Wayman's back in the lead. Speak second, third place, we'll look further back, I think it's uh, Lee Fairhurst up to third now. Yes, Mick Sorda has dropped back, it's Wayman out front by a clear margin. What a disappointment for Dan Johnson, he hit Baz Paytoum's car as he tried to lap him there at Turn 1 along with Ryan Harrison. He clipped his bumper and that's punctured Dan's front tyre. What a shame for Dan Johnson. Rob Speak then is now in second place. Can he catch Wayman to retain the world title? They're in the closing laps now. The boards are out. 4-5-1-5. Junior Wayman. For many, he was the pre-meeting favourite for the gold roof, given his superb form over the course of this 2016 season. We're in the closing stages now. The gap looking pretty insurmountable to me for Rob Speak to try and catch Junior Wayman. The man from Silsden in Yorkshire, surely barring any major disaster, is heading for his third world title. The last lap board goes out for Junior Wayman, the British champion. He won the world title here at Coventry in 1998. He won at Northampton in 2005. 
And now, around the last men for the third time in his illustrious career, Junior Wayman is world champion. Wayman wins the world title by a clear margin from Rob Speak in second. And we'll check on who was third. I think it was Lee Fairhurst in third in 2-1-7. The celebrations are about to start for the Wayman family as Junior throws the car sideways in celebration. Some said last year when his son Frankie Junior Junior started in Brisker F1 that he'd cut back his own racing to help young Frankie out. Yeah, right. Frankie Junior is world champion for the third time. Rob Speak gives him a congratulatory shove there into turn three. Junior Wayman cuts loose in celebration with Donuts. What a drive. You have to feel for Dan Johnson what might have been but for that puncture. Lee Fairhurst conferred, confirmed in third place behind Rob Speak as the celebrations continue for Junior Wayman. Stephen Smith climbs out of his car on the second bend as Junior Wayman cuts loose in celebration, showering a few people with shale. And the celebrations are about to start down there. Mick Sorda on the infield. He came over in fourth. Top uh, Dutchman, I think, was Ron Kronda. And the check's taking place on the car there by the mechanics. The photographers rush in to get their shots. Happy scenes indeed down on the infield here at Coventry International Motor Speedway. A breathless affair, to say the least, as Junior heads round for uh, an additional lap of honour on his way to the winner's circle. I'm sure his daughter Phoebe will be down there to greet him. His son Frankie JJ as well. There's Frankie JJ coming in to congratulate his dad. Frankie Smiler Wayman is going to be down there as well. There is the world champion. He climbs atop his aerofoil, nearly falls off it. Frankie Wayman Jr. is world champion for the third time in his career. What an incredible career he has had. Leaps down from the aerofoil. Be congratulated by his fellow drivers. Danny is down there as well. I'm sure Phoebe is too. There's Phoebe. Emotional scenes indeed for all the Wayneman family. There is a very emotional Phoebe Wayneman. Jacqueline Ellis will congratulate her other half, Lee Fairhurst, on his podium as well. And we will check out the result of this year's Power Max World Championship. Frankie Wayman Jr., the winner, by 1.8 seconds ahead of Rob Speak. Third for Lee Fairhurst. Mick Sorda, four, the head of the top Dutchman, Ron Kronda. Will Yarrow in sixth place, gaining 20 places from the, his grid slot. Danny Wayman in seventh, ahead of Paul Harris. And Dirk Rydanus from the back row of the grid takes ninth. And Baz Paytoum rounding out the top ten. 15 cars went the distance out of the 34 starters in that one. Fastest lap went to the unlucky Dan Johnson. Congratulations once again, Frankie Wayman Jr. So on the podium down there, for the third time in his career, a third gold roof for the legend that is Junior Wayman. Receives the uh, massive trophy and the plaudits from the sponsors and his many friends and family. Let's head down to the pits and hear from him. Frankie, yeah. world champion. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely superb. Absolutely superb. But that car was on it from the beginning. Got in on the start, got away, a couple of yellers, ended up back behind Dan. Dan was getting away, he's quick in the dry. Just worked the car a bit, let it settle down. I was catching him. I was right on him down there and he got caught on a car as he pressured him into a car, punching his tyre, managed to get through, job done. So the team and everybody were absolutely awesome, the car was on it proper. I mean, it's been built for this job, you know what I mean? I've spent a lot of time building it this winter. Yeah, it looks different and everything, but the car itself. And uh, I said I want to win more World Finals, and that's what I'm going to do. Well done, mate. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. Rob's second place. Some people say it's the first loser, but a lot of people didn't didn't know whether you finished that race because of the events that are happening at the front no that's right you know we did well to finish but second is definitely first loser I'll agree with that but no we all want a win don't we but not everybody can so uh, seconds we'll take second Frank all year has been doing really well on shell you've been trying to keep up with him but that new car for him just seems to work wonders for him 
Yeah, he's had a really good year, and um, to be honest with you, I think I've had my worst year ever. Just nothing seems to have gone my way, but you know, and I can't take nothing away. We've put so much effort in behind the scenes, everything, and you know, we've done our best. And you can't ask for any more. You know, that's all we can do. The team put everything into it, and it's just been brilliant. Seen you've never raced this car before. The back end of that final, I think you were probably one of the fastest cars on track. Yeah, it was coming really good towards the end. The more I got the brakes set up, I wanted them, and the more I got used to the car, you know, it was coming really good, you know. So, obviously, a big thanks to Daniel for letting me use it, and uh, yeah, people was a bit uh, spectacle how, how it would go. And I've never even driven it before, so you know, to stand on the on the on the third step next to two legends, Robert and uh, Frank, yeah, I'm happy with that. Makes all the uh, hard work in the week worthwhile. Yeah, we've not had much sleep this week whatsoever, the team. So, yeah, thanks to the team and thanks to everyone who's, who's put their effort in to, to get us all here and get us, uh, hopefully I've paired them back a little bit with that third. Ron, you win the final last night at the foreign entrance meeting in the highest place today. Do you wish you were a bit further up the grid? Yeah, it was a little bit uh, difficult, or difficult, but the, it was not so, um, how do you say it? Out. There was no time trial, so it, yeah, I could not have a better play. So uh, they they take the best time from yesterday. So yeah, it was the a shame. Yeah, the weather conditions were unfortunately not great for a time trial. I'm afraid at the time when they were due to run. Yeah, okay, I know that, but it was for everybody the same then. But I'm happy with the fifth place. I came from the ninth row, so uh, yeah, it was good. So the champagne flies on the podium here at Coventry International Motor Speedway. Lee Fairhurst, Rob Speak, and Frankie Wayneman Jr. Wonderful scenes indeed. And the rain even stops for the biggest night of the year, the biggest race of the year. A wonderful sunset here at Coventry. That's not the end of the action though, more stock car racing in a moment. Meeting final about to get underway under the floodlights here at Coventry International Motor Speedway. 35 cars on track. This race contesting the Harry Smith Memorial Trophy in memory of X number 100 in Brisker F1. Away we go then at 16, uh, 20 laps I should say. 35 cars out there. A lot of Dutch drivers have qualified for this one from the earlier three heats and three consolation races. Mark Sargent in 326 who will go into the early lead from White Grade. Too many big names to list out in this one. The first car being sent spinning there in the middle of the pack. He gets uh, clobbered by Baz Paytoum, one of our world finalists in H694. There's a pile up on the outside of turn two, the exit there. H69, Cormeyer gets fired into the fence. And H152, Gert Jan Kluck into the wall. We've got yellow flags out already with cars everywhere on the exit of turn two and the exit of turn four. There's Gert Jan Kluck in H152. Had a heat win earlier in this meeting. He won heat one after the consolation semi-final. So a replay of that action down there on turns three and four. Cor Meyer getting fired in. It's England versus Holland in the middle of the pack there. And Gert Jan Kluck also finding the wall as the yellow flags came out. Gert Jan Kluck in a Kern Maris prepared car able to drive off. Some damage to the front suspension there. So that's the end of the heat winners final. And Cormeyer in H69 being towed in as well. So quite a few cars removed from the action. Nigel Green still going though. It's Mark Sargent, the man from Lincolnshire in 326 who leads. H100, young Dutchman jo Joey Sloof in second place. He's only a teenager, still at college. Built that car together with his dad. And he had a heat win earlier tonight as well. A fine Coventry debut, UK debut for Joey Sloof in H100. He's in second place. The uh, higher graders still yet to make their move. In fact, the vast majority of drivers, I think, who've qualified for this final are from the Netherlands. 83 there in uh, third place. That is Darren Clark, the ex-Rebel star. As we get back underway. There's the style of Shale Racing throwing it sideways. Mark Sargent leads it. Joey Sleuth has been fired wide by Darren Clark. Will Yarrow's up there again in 22. By their way through H47 was in the middle of that lot. Danny Van Vamelen, another of our Dutchmen. So many Dutch drivers here this year. They had their own dedicated meeting 
the night before the world final here at Coventry. Ron Cromder won the final at that one. Mark Gilbank, a Coventry specialist, attacking Will Yarrow. Joey Sleuth gets fired in on turn one. There's Paul Hines, so unlucky to miss out on the world final this year. Mark Gilbank gets past Will Yarrow. Mick Sorder is in there as well. Number two, Paul Harris and two, so plenty of our world finalists in there. The world champion, of course, retires from the meeting to enjoy his victory. Somebody getting spun out there, and a tangle between Lee Fairhurst and H195. That's Harmin Sveva, somebody else crashing into them. Couldn't quite see who that was. Might well be Danny Van Vabelen who's gone in there. Nick Sorda fighting with Will Yarrow in the 22. There's Paul Hines in 259 from Leicestershire. 22, Yarrow under fire from Nigel Green now. I think that is, no, it's not. It's H148 of Xiang Schmidt. He's had some success on visits to Coventry in the past. Similar looking car to Nigel Green. Harmin Sveva gets out of the pile-up, keeps going. Still your leader is Mark Sargent in 326. The White Raider has already had a heat win tonight. He won heat three. Looking to keep his lead. He's got Mark Gilbank on his tail, number 21. Then it's Mick Sorda. That's your top three. So Mark Sargent's going to have his work cut out here. Moving through there. Number two, Paul Harrison getting past to H22 of uh, Lou Vobers, I think that was. Two 22s out there, Will Yarrow and Lou Vobers, trying to confuse me with their numbers. So still your leader is Mark Sargent, the East Coast legend, some call him. Great entertainer is Mark. Chased here by Mark Gilbank, Coventry specialist. Third place is Mick Sorder. Who behind him is Paul Harrison in number two. Somebody spun there on the inside of turn two. Couldn't quite see who that was. A bit tricky to see the numbers on some of these cars at times. Mark Sargent, you can see the speed they're getting up now. Now that the track has dried out. Nick Sorda is up into second place in 150, the man from Hertfordshire. His son Charlie, soon to join him in the uh, Risk Ref ones, I'm sure, in a few years. Currently racing in the National Mini Stocks, as is uh, Mark Sargent's son Finn. Sergeant head of Sorda, Harrison, Gilbank, Will Yarrow is fifth. Then we've got Carl Hawkins, 175, Sheng Smith Jr., Matt Newson, Rob Speak, and Dan Johnson in tenth. He'll still be thinking, what might have been had my front tyre held out? Well, one person whose tyre hasn't held out there is Baz Paytou in H694. Joey Sloof is out of the race as well in H100 as Will Yarrow attacks a lapped car there. That was one of the Dutch yellow graders. I think that might have been Lex Liman in H25. We said so many Dutch drivers out there. Somebody's been taken out, a flash of flame. I think that's uh, Sheng Schmidt in H148 that's gone in there at turn one. Mix order attack, Sargent. This is for the lead, and he's put him into a back marker. Into turn three, wallop into a back marker goes Mark Sargent. Mix order takes over the lead in typical style. So that's the end of Mark Sargent's race, I think, unless he can drag himself out of the fence. Sorda leads, but he's got Paul Harrison closing him down, he's got ahead of Mark Gilbank, there's Mark Sargent, he's got out of the fence and tries to keep going in this action-packed Harry Smith Memorial meeting final. Is it going to be a win for Mick Sorda? He just missed out on the world final podium, he came in fourth after a troubled season so far. He leads Paul Harrison here, coming into some back marker traffic again, Harrison could close in here. Is he going to attack somebody going into the wall there on the back straight? That looks like Dirk Rydanus in H29. They lap 83 of Darren Clark out of turn four. Been a while since you've seen Darren racing in Brisker F1. Chasing now. Paul Harrison is closing in. We've got yellow flags though. The yellow lights come on. And the race being brought to a halt just as Paul Harrison was about to attack for the lead. Now the problem there on the back straight is Dirk Rydanus. Stranded against the fence. There's only about five laps to go in this Harry Smith Memorial meeting final. So, this could change things. There is Rydanus stuck in the fence. Brilliant drive in the world final to make the top ten from the back row of the grid. So, Mick Sorda, Paul Harrison. Mark Sargent is there behind them, but he's a lap down now after going off earlier on, courtesy of Mick Sorda's front bumper. And the rest are well behind. Mark Gilbank is in third place. Then it's Carl Hawkins in 175. He won one of the consolation races earlier on. The other's going to Dan Johnson and Ed Nietzsche. Rob Speak next in the order in 318. 
Then we've got Matt Newsom. So the world finalists up towards the front in this one. Is Mick Sorda going to hang on in front? Number four in the world this year. Paul Harrison finished eighth in the world final. Mark Sargent's perhaps out for revenge for being taken out of the lead. He's in behind them. As away we go over the remaining distance. Mick Sorda leads into the first turn. Paul Harrison getting ready to attack. Bit of push and shove there. Carl Hawkins three wide with Matt Newson. And Rob Speak, the outgoing world champion in the middle. 150, Mick Sorda keeps his lead. Paul Harrison not quite able to attack. Is he going to get within range for a last spend lunge? Mick Sorda is the specialist in last spend lunges. There's Tom Harris, he's come through into fourth place. Had a good restart there. Sorda leads into the last lap. This is Paul Harrison's last chance in car number two. Round turns one and two, they come for the last time. Down the back straight. Is Paul Harrison going to do it? He's trying, he's not going to get close enough. And the meeting final, the Harry Smith Memorial Trophy goes to Mick Sorda in 150. Harrison second. Waiting to see who comes through for third. It was Mark Gilback in number 21. Brilliant stuff there from Mick Sorda. He'll cut loose in his trademark sideways celebration. May have missed out on the world final podium. Makes up for it by winning the Harry Smith Memorial meeting final. I suspect we're going to see some donuts. Indeed we are. Mick Sorda cuts loose in celebration. One of the real entertainers of Brisker F1. Controversial at times, but always good fun. Just like Mark Sargent in 326. Careful with your donuts, Mick. You don't want to run into anybody. H20 just uh, getting out of the way there. That's Bert de Vries. I think that was the car that uh, Mark Sargent got stuffed into earlier on by Mick Sorda. Oh, Mick Sorda can't stop doing donuts here. Round and round and round he goes. Brilliant stuff. That's the end of that set of tyres. Paul Harrison and Mark Gilbank will join him on the podium. Tom Harris just missing out there among others. So the official result of the meeting final for the Harry Smith Memorial Trophy. Mick Sorda the winner by 1.2 seconds ahead of Paul Harrison. Mark Gilbank in third place ahead of Tom Harris. And Danny Wayman going through for fifth place ahead of Paul Hines. Rutger Velk, the top Dutchman in seventh place ahead of Carl Hawkins. Dennis Tessela and Will Yarrow rounding out the top 10. 17 cars out of the 35 who started went the distance in that one. And it was Danny Wayman in fifth place who got the fastest lap of the race. Now it's time for two Grand National events. So many cars here tonight willing to take part. We've had to split them into two groups and there are 32 cars on track for the first of them. 16 laps for this uh, first of two Grand Nationals and look at the size of that grid. This is going to be mayhem. Luke Dennis there in 192 behind uh, Chris Broxop. There isn't time to uh, pick out the uh, star names for this one. Round they come then towards the green flag number 43 of Adam Bamford in pole position. He will lead them off. Away they go then. Already the Blue Graders pushing and shoving there on turns three and four. It's the first turn. It's Bamford who's got the lead. 3-5-1 in there. That's John Frost. Already the Yellow Graders all over each other. Slightly slower start to this one. The track a little wet. A couple of spinners there, including uh, the 3-3-1 car which uh, had a rollover earlier in the meeting. That's Peter Allen in one of Matt Newson's hire cars, the green car with no aerofoil there, facing the wrong way. Slightly slower pace then. The rain has returned, unfortunately, ahead of this Grand National. 477 under fire there. That's Martin Utwis from the Netherlands. The yellow flags are out already. 43 Adam Bamford has lost his lead there. It's going across the infield. See the rain on the camera lenses. And uh, there's the problem. 335 Mark Woodhull has uh, taken a battering and he has sits uh, stranded on the inner kerb. Got the state of the left hand side of the car. The uh, side rail is bent, the back axle broken, and Mark Woodhull very much out of the race. See his sons maybe joining him, joining him in Brisker F1 soon. They race junior stocks carts. Good training for Brisker F1. I speak from experience when I say stocks carts are not easy things to drive. So, getting ready for a restart then. Before you ask, no, I have never driven a Brisker F1 and I don't think I'd be able to. 
maximum respect goes to all of these drivers from me because I know sure as heck I couldn't do it 1-1-2 one, one, there, the uh, yellow grader, that's Aaron Lickhart. Again, apologies if I do mispronounce any of our Dutch names. So your leader there is a H6999 of Jan Kuhn. So it is a Dutchman up front as we head off for the restart. John Frost in second place. Looks like Anthony Lee coming through for third in 3-3-9, so still white graders up front then as we get back underway there is Anthony Lee newcomer this year in third Adam Bamford is fourth getting fired wide there one of our Dutchmen that's H295 Willem's favour and just to collect it back together keeps going Richard Bryan's got a good restart he's ahead of Colin Goodswin and the H112 in there as well Aaron Leekhardt Richard Bryan round the outside line there looking for grip 198 Nigel Wally at the head of this group and Wallop straight in there goes uh, one of the yellow tops, that's the number 36 car, H36 of Wendy Koopmans, the Dutch lady racer, somebody else has gone in there as well, it's one of the blue tops, I can't see the number at the moment unfortunately, the race continues on, Bumper going in there between a couple of yellow graders, Mal Brown in 34, in there as well ahead of uh, look like Cohen Maris in 61, we have a change up front, 351, John Frost has taken over. Haven't seen much from John this year, but he leads Jan Kuhn with the pink numbers there on the 699 car. And Anthony Lee up there in third in 339. He gets past Jan Kuhn, avoiding a couple of spun cars there. Luke Dennis, one of them, 192. 351, John Frost still leading. Spun car there on the outside of turns one and two. I think that is uh, Lou Vobers. So we've got a collision there involving H541 of Bert Hombard. I think he was caught up there with a yellow hemstrap in H173. H17 is off as well. That's Bouvet Ayan Hidinga. More cars piling in. Just how many Dutch drivers have we got here in this meeting? So many here this weekend. They had their own meeting, as we mentioned earlier. Now H84 goes in backwards. Wallop straight in backwards goes the H84. That's Mark Vudenberg. Very experienced Dutch racer. Lou Vovers is facing the wrong way. The Netherlands Ovals did have a uh, formula a few years ago of reverse racers, where you had to race in reverse gear. Inspired, of course, by the Daft Variomatic. John Frost still leading ahead of Richard Bryan. Anthony Lee up there in third. Then we've got H699 of Jan Cohen. Nigel Wally is fifth. H38 is in uh, sixth position. That's of Bert Koopmans. And then the rest of them round out the top ten. Struggle to keep up with this. We've got Dutch drivers spinning and flying everywhere. The English drivers trying to keep it on the straight and narrow. Looks like we've lost uh, possibly Nigel Wally there on turn two. John Frost continues to lead, though. This is good stuff from the white graders. Higher graders too busy fighting it out with each other. Adam Bamford stuck on turn two, but Richard Bryan in 2 3 8. The ex national mini stocks racer trying to close down our race leader on the attack there round turns three and four can he get up the inside there's four laps to go here comes Brian he's got the bumper in that was a very well judged hit and wallop straight in goes John Frost Richard Bryan is the lead Anthony Lee up into second place he's going great guns up there in second looking for I think his best ever finish in Brisker F1 but Richard Bryan a superb drive Adam Bamford, could, could you move, please? You're blocking our camera there with your aerofoil <laughs> on turn two. As the rain comes down, Richard Bryan continues to lead, and he is heading for victory. Excellent stuff in this first of two Grand Nationals. Another one coming up next. Richard Bryan away and clear now ahead of Ant Lee in second. Coming up to lap the H388 car. That is Jelle Bilsma. They go into the final lap. Yellow Bilsma currently running in sixth place. Oh, and uh, Bilsma collects uh, a couple of spun cars there. Has that taken the leader out? No. He got round the outside. Anthony Lee could get a last bend lunge in here. In 3-3 three, three lines. Another back marker ahead of them. Is Lee going to get close enough? No, he's not. My goodness gracious me, that was a dicey finish there. But Richard Bryan takes the win. What a drive. Anthony Lee gets his best ever finish in second. And I will admit beyond that, I haven't got a clue. Goodness me. What a frantic race that was. 
Richard Bryan, the yellow grader, wins it as the red flags come out. That was one of the most chaotic Brisker F1 races I've seen in a very long time. Well done, Richard Bryan. That's, I think, the best drive of his career. Quite superb. Just looking down the top ten results outside the top three. All the other finishers in that race were from the Netherlands. Richard Bryan cuts loose with donuts. That's the best drive of his career to take a very well-judged win there. It looked like he'd lost it all on the start of the last lap when he had to go wide to avoid a couple of spun cars. But he takes the win at Richard Bryan in 2.38, finishing ahead of uh, Ant Lee by 0.7 of a second. Mal Brown taking third place ahead of uh, Bart Koopmans, then Jan Cohen, Yellow Bilsma, Martin Bilsma, Siak Kenti in H179, Gert Elzinger, Mark Budenberg, and the only other finisher was Lou Vobers. It was Lou who got the fastest lap despite only completing 10 laps, but he was still running at the finish, unlike many. Well, it's not over yet. We've got another Grand National to come now, and there are another 31 cars out on track for this one. Another 16 laps to come, and already we've got trouble there. Bas Paytoum has been taken out in H694 on Turn 3. So here we go then with Grand National number two. We've got a yellow grader spun on turn one. Mark uh, Gertjan Kluck hitting trouble there in H152 to get things underway. Leading the uh, first lap is Joey Sloof in H100. Or H is the numbers out in this meeting tonight, I swear. There is Joey Sloof in his self-built car. Tom Stevenson in 75 gets uh, spun aside on turn two. Bumpers going in among the yellow tops here. Mark Poole attacking and straight in there I think that was our early leader Joey Sloof and there's Nigel Harry number 45 we haven't seen him yet tonight he gets a knock on uh, turn four it's returning from injury it's uh, our Nige 3-2-1 Ed Nietzsche ahead of Will Yarrow 207 Ben Herdman getting caught up there with 446 Joe Booth he spins around the 337 car there that's Dennis Tesla getting caught up with somebody he's stuck on turn two well, apologise, there just isn't time to mention every driver involved in tonight's entertainment, but we must say a big, big thank you to all of them for their fabulous entertainment tonight. Here's the fight for the lead then. Mark Poole has taken over up front, just going past Lex Lemon there in H25. There's Mick Rogers in 244 going through ahead of Lex Lemon. Rogers, the former V8 Hot Stocks gold top. But out front is Mark Poole, the shale specialist. 276. Oh, we've got a bit of a mess there. Who's that crabbing along? It's Ben Herdman. Looks like his steering is broken in 207. Dennis Tesselar in the fence along with Gert Jan Kluck on uh, turn two. Nigel Harry ploughs on in 45 in the Coventry Brandon Bees liveried car in tribute to this stadium. Harman's favour there battling it out with Mick Rogers. And wallop straight in there goes. Uh, it was a red top, I can tell you that. Another of our Dutch friends, I think that might be uh, the H228 of Jan Roloff Vibenga, who hit the fence there. Mark Poole continues to lead. Down the home straight he goes. Spun car there on uh, turn one, couldn't see who it was. Lost Tom Stevenson on the back straight. And there is John Lund in 53 under fire from Johan Katzberg. Retired on the opening lap of the Constellation semi-final, looks like he might be in trouble again. So, Johan Katzberg behind our race leader, Mark Poole. There's Harmin's favour in 195. A tangle there, Will Yarrow getting involved with somebody coming out of turn two. Halfway flag is out, let's check out the order. Mark Poole ahead of Mick Rogers, Will Yarrow is third, ahead of H25 of Lex Limon. Then it's Ed Nietzsche, Matt Newsom, Tom Harris, Rob Speak, H226, which is Peter van der East in ninth place. And Baz Peytu has been spun out there down the back straight. He's collided with Michael Stewart. More cars piling in down the far side as well. But I think they've got away with that. And the race will continue. Coming into the closing stages then of this Grand National. That the yellow flags are out. Probably because of that carnage we saw on the back straight. Oh my goodness, we've got cars everywhere on turn three. Look at this. Marker tyres across the road. Danny Wayman's involved there. Oh my goodness like a scrapyard on turn three Nigel Harry's involved a lot of damage to his car look at the front of that uh, Joey Sloof is in there Lex Limmer as well 
Oh, there's bits of metal and tyres all over the track on turn three. It looks like everyone's OK, and we are clear for the restart over the closing stages. So, Mark Poole ahead of Will Yarrow at the front of the field. John Lund's up there as well. I think Lundy may be a lap down. Well, goodness me. I'm running out of voice here this evening. We've already seen a magnificent world final victory for Junior Wayman. There's still plenty of action to come in this Grand National. There is Tom Harris, Rob Speaks in there, Lee Fairhurst. They're still to make their move towards the front of the field. Still quite a few laps to go. We're just over half distance in this one. Michael Stewart able to keep going after that wallop on the back straight. 2.63 at the back of the field there. That is James Tucker. That's the car we saw spin on turn one earlier on. Getting back underway then with this second of our two Grand Nationals. Look how many cars have got littering the infield. Mark Poole leads them. There's somebody getting fired in as expected there on the first turn. Who is that? It's Ed Neitchell in number 321. It's not been Ed's evening where he did have a consolation victory earlier on. Nick Rogers gets shoveled out wide in 244 by the higher graders. Rob Speak under fire from Matt Newson. Tom Harris in there as well with the smaller wing on his car. Oh, the leaders have gone. Will Yarrow and Mark Poole have tangled. They're in the fence on turn two. So now who is up front? This is the battle for the lead between Matt Newson, Rob Speak and Tom Harris. So this has become the battle for the lead. In goes the bumper from Speak. Matt Newson wallops straight in on turn one. That is going to hand the lead to Tom Harris in 84. Or is it? No. Lee Fairhurst has come through. He now gets potted by Tom Harris. Oh, this is more like it. This race has suddenly come alive as the lap boards come out. Harris leads it from Mick Rogers. Almost tangling up there with Rob Speak. He's in second. They're scrabbling all over each other. Newson's out of it. It's Tom Harris who's got the lead. My goodness gracious me. 217 of Lee Fairhurst coming through in the second. We're on the last lap now of this world final meeting for 2016. And it's going to be a win for Tom Harris in car 84. Rob Speak is going to have one last attack, I think, on Lee Fairhurst. Here he comes. Harris is coming through to win. Who is going to be second? Harris wins it. It's side by side across the line. I couldn't tell who got second there. The win goes to Tom Harris, though, in car 84. My goodness, what a race to round off the evening. I think that's the best race of the night. And well done indeed to Tom Harris, the former world champion, who crowns a rather disappointing night with a victory in the Grand National. Absolutely superb racing there to round off this, what could be the last world final meeting here at Coventry. We'll check out the result of that one then. Tom Harris taking the win in that one ahead of uh, Rob Speak by just over three seconds. And there were only a few thousandths of a second in it between Speak and Fairhurst to Speak beat Fairhurst to the line in a photo finish. Mick Rogers fourth ahead of Ed Mitchell, Bert De Vries the top Dutchman in sixth place ahead of Peter Langeveld, then Will Yarrow recovering Matt Tangle with Mark Poole. Murray Jones and Richard Talsma rounding out the top 10 in that one. It was the race winner Tom Harris who got the fastest lap and only 13 of the 31 starters made the line. So what a stunning world final meeting that was then. That just about wraps up the action from here at Coventry. Congratulations again, new world champion Frankie Wayman Jr. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.